On a hot July afternoon, the shrimp boat Miss Amber docks at Lazaretto Packing Company on Tybee Island. Almost immediately, her crew begins to sort the catch for packing. Her captain, George McKenzie, has been shrimping the Georgia coast for more than 40 years. He's seen the industry's ups and downs. For the past few years, it seems, the good years have been overshadowed by the bad. Well, I'm catching plenty of shrimp because there's nobody out there out there fishing on them but me. But, but it really don't mean nothing because, you know, the price of shrimp is down. And we know the fall shrimp's going to have black gill in it. In the mid-1990s, shrimpers and fishery managers began to notice something strange. In the late summer and fall, some of the shrimp showed an odd condition they called black gill. Many shrimpers looked to that as one reason their catches were declining. When that black gill gets on them, it kills them before they get to us. And, uh, you'll go out there one day and they'll be, you'll be tearing the shrimp up. Two days later, they'll be gone. Uh, they, just, they just die out, they get weak. By 2013, concern over black gill, combined with a bad year for shrimpers, prompted the Georgia Department of Natural Resources and the University of Georgia Marine Extension to launch an investigation into black gill. University of Georgia Skidaway Institute of Oceanography scientists Mark Fisher and Richard Lee were asked to lead a study funded by Georgia Sea Grant. We were approached by Marine Extension uh, if there was anything that we could do about it because of course our group has worked on marine diseases of marine organisms in the past. We have a history of that. Uh, and they, we were sort of asked, can you help us understand the, what black gill is really? And that's how we got involved. The research includes cruises on board Skidaway Institute's research vessel Savannah. Black gill begins to appear when the water warms in the summer and it peaks in the early fall. It declines and disappears over the winter and spring to reappear the following summer. The scientists knew from the beginning the darkening of the gills was a type of immune response that could have a number of different causes. We didn't know what was causing it uh, here. Um, but very quickly we, we found out the answer just by looking at a few samples under the microscope and we very quickly identified uh, that the cause here was a ciliate, uh, a little single-celled animal, a protist. Uh, but we had no idea what, uh, what ciliate that was. Uh, so the really from the beginning was, what is it? What's causing black gill here? To further narrow down the type of cilia, Frischer's team used both traditional microscopy as well as cutting-edge molecular tools. We're working with some uh, very well-known, renowned ciliate taxonomists who use electron microscopy in particular, it's not just a regular microscope, um, to look at all the ultrastructures of these microscopic animals. And that's the basis on which the taxonomy of this group has been, uh, have been described. And, and so far, we've, uh, what we're seeing is a very different organism, an unknown uh, ciliate. The other, of course, is to look at its genes. And so we've been looking at a number of uh, the sequences, a DNA sequence of several genes that are useful for uh, taxonomic identification. And at this point, um, we have discrepancies between what the microscopies are seeing and what the genes are seeing. The genes say it's one thing right now and very clearly. And the microscopy says, no, it's not that. So we have, a, we have a lot to learn, I think, here, and I think that uh, one of the discoveries that we'll make is perhaps that this is a new ciliate. Identifying the type of ciliate causing black gill is just the beginning. Many other questions remain unanswered. How is it affecting Georgia shrimp? Is it harmful to shrimp? How does it spread? Is the relationship between black gill and shrimp landings predictable? And can anything be done to prevent black gill? Because if we understand those kind of basic uh, processes, perhaps we can do something about it. Uh, really, almost, almost everything is, if you have a question, it's not answered about, about this black gill at this point. There is even disagreement over how widespread black gill is. DNR surveys indicate black gill appearing in 35 to 45 percent of the fall crop, while some shrimpers are saying it's at least twice that. 
DNR conducts fishery surveys on a monthly basis, which leaves big gaps in the data sets. Lindsay Parker is the captain of the UGA Marine Extension's research vessel, Georgia Bulldog. He frequently serves as a liaison between the shrimpers and Marine Extension, and he's asking shrimpers to try to help fill those gaps. I've asked them to, from their trinet shrimp, uh, first thing in the morning to collect the first, to save the first 30 or more uh, live shrimp from wherever they are that morning, wherever they cast their nets that morning, to get one observation of at least 30 shrimp and get a total number of shrimp, the number with visible black gill, and where they are and what time. It is still unknown exactly how black gill affects the health of shrimp. Preliminary results seem to indicate that black gill does not kill shrimp outright. Infected shrimp tend to throw off their infected gills by molting more frequently, perhaps reducing their strength and endurance. Researcher Amy Fowler with South Carolina DNR ran shrimp on a treadmill and discovered the shrimp with black gill tire out in about half the time as healthy ones. We suspect our hypothesis at this point is that uh, black gill may not be causing a lot of direct mortality, uh, but it's causing a lot of secondary mortality. So a shrimp that has black gill doesn't breathe as well, uh, it uh, is less effective at escaping predators, there are lots of predators out there, and so they're consumed much more readily. Uh, that's our working hypothesis now, and of course uh, we need to do a, a quite a bit more studies to, to bear that idea out. Initial results of testing also indicate it's possible for black gill to be transmitted from one shrimp to another, especially when an uninfected shrimp feeds on the head of a dead infected animal. This raises questions about shrimpers heading their catch and throwing the heads back in the water. The Georgia Department of Natural Resources is responsible for managing the state's shrimp fishery. Their wish list includes a model to predict the way black gill will affect the shrimp industry. If we could have a forecast of you know, how bad black, sh black gill is going to be in the fall of each year, we could probably help the shrimpers out, help them plan accordingly, and maybe change some of our management strategies accordingly. Let's settle one thing real clear. Does the black gill have any effect on the qualities of the shrimp as a food for you and me? Absolutely not. Uh, they, it's, they, first of all, it's not, it doesn't affect humans at all. You can't get, humans can't get black gill. We don't even have gills, for one thing. But there's no uh, known effects. And also that goes for other fish and things like that don't get black gill either. Uh, and in terms of taste, uh, I certainly haven't noticed any. Um, and I don't think you have either. The work continues to solve the mysteries, and another research cruise is scheduled at the height of the fall season. Everyone from researchers to shrimpers are hopeful answers will be found to help the shrimp industry. They plan to continue to work together to address the issue, and will keep digging until they have answers. Regardless of what is discovered, it won't benefit George McKenzie. This is his last season. He's hanging up his nets and has his boat advertised for sale. Thank <laughs> you.